If you are a flat earther, there are a few other things that you sort of have to believe other than flat earth. You have to believe that gravity isn't real, for instance, and that eight inches per mile squared actually works. But most importantly, above all else, you have to believe that space is fake. But today, regarding that, I am going to openly challenge a flat earther to try and debunk the un- Debunkable. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Now before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, YouGov. Now YouGov is free to join and so easy to use to make some extra cash. And as a member, you'll earn points for giving actual opinions that matter by completing short surveys and polls. Now I do my surveys when I'm waiting for the kids on the school run, for instance, passing the time quite nicely and sometimes even when the kids are at their swimming lesson. Now YouGov really is a great life hack and side hustle. Now I've put my extra cash that I've earned towards some new running shoes even though I've already got four pairs. Whoops. Now it's so easy to take a survey, here we go. Uh, in which month were you born? That would be November. Which of these online games or online gaming platforms have you heard of? Uh, Minecraft, Fortnite, Roblox, not Rec Room. Okay. Which of these online games uh, have you heard, ever used? Uh, I've played a bit of Fortnite and I've played a bit of Minecraft with my son, but I've not played Roblox, the boys play that. So click on my link in the description, start taking surveys and earn extra cash today. Right, back to today's video, which as I promised will be a monumental challenge to flat earthers. Now, it's a prerequisite for flat earthers to claim that space is fake, NASA is a hoax and everything they do is a lie. The trouble is, there's a video in existence which completely destroys that opinion. Now, in my opinion, it is undebunkable and all my time doing YouTube for five plus years, I've not once, not once, seen a flat earther take this video on. Now, I've mentioned it before in previous videos, but today we're gonna to really show it off. And it is, of course, the 50-minute tour of the ISS. It quite simply is an amazing video, and it shows NASA astronaut Stephen Swanson giving us a guided tour of the International Space Station. Now, as I said, in my opinion, this is undebunkable, uh, and that's highlighted by the fact that our favorite Flat Earth Fell compilation guest and all-round NASA critic Level Earth Observer has never, ever, looked at this video. Now he has looked at almost every single other video from NASA except this one. Now I've asked him to multiple times, but he still refuses. You see, the thing is, I already know all of the arguments from Flat Earthers about why they think the space is fake and that NASA is a lie and all of that. They say CGI and underwater and wires and parabolic flights and everything like that. And none of those excuses work on this 50 minute tour of the ISS. So I've asked a friend of the channel, Pete MK, to do a deep dive on this video of the uh, tour of the ISS. Just to reaffirm what we all know and that nothing will wash when it comes to this 50 minute tour. Take it away, Pete. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to an episode of Flat Out Friday. I'm very obviously not Dan, but he has very kindly allowed me to take over his channel for one day. Um, my name is Pete MK. I have a channel which is various things, movies, gaming, and every now and again I talk about people like Level Up Observer, CC, and all the other usual suspects. Today we're going to talk about Level Up Observer yet again, and his fascination or boarding on obsession with the International Space Station, or anything space related. And for a while now, myself and Dan have been trying to get him to watch the 50 minute ISS International Space Station tour, which is a fantastic piece of footage because it blows apart any argument anybody may have whether or not space is real and the International Space Station is actually up there. So if you'll indulge me, I'm going to go through some points where should Elio ever get round to actually watching this video. These are the points we think he'll try to point out and try and debunk. But as you'll see, it's completely 100% undebunkable. And that's probably not even a real word, but here we go. 
One of the first things that Level Earth Observer or any flat earth in general who's trying to pick bones in the International Space Station is to say that it's all done with wires. They cherry pick certain video clips. Because they're in zero gravity, clothes, hair and things like that do not act in the same way as if they were down here on Earth within an atmosphere. So any slight aberration in the way something moves or reacts to something else is instantly pointed out as absolute evidence that there's wires or harnesses in play. But looking at the 50 minute ISS video, it's very difficult to see where any kind of harness and rig system would be put into place where all this would be possible. Now I'm a big fan of movies, have been since our late 70s, early 80s, showing my age there. I was born after the moon landings, but before Tron. So I grew up in a time when special effects were starting to become more advanced. Not at the levels we are now, where science fiction is very close to reality, but I'll get onto that later. But back in the 70s and 80s, special effects as we know it today was very, very basic. It's a laughable concept that the world famous Blue Marble picture, which I think was taken in 1972, was created using CGI. When only six years later in 1978, this was the absolute pinnacle of what was possible with CGI imagery at the time. In my previous video where I spoke about Level Earth Observer and Simon Dan, I mentioned the movie Gravity starring Sandra Bullock and George Clooney and how some of the special effects were created by a production team called Bot and Dolly. Um, I showed a little clip and the, the full box video is available on YouTube. Not long after they released that video, they were asked to do the special effects for the film Gravity. And there's a lot of behind the scenes footage showing them use the robots to create the special effects. And as you can see, it's a mess. There's harnesses, wires, there's massive great pieces of equipment and a bloody great robot showing a camera into Sandra Bullock's face. This is what it actually takes to simulate a zero G environment while still inside the Earth's atmosphere. And as I said before, it's not perfect. As amazing, as realistic as it seems, there's always the uncanny valley. The little thing in the mind that says, this looks amazing, but it isn't quite right. The wonderful thing about the video taken on the ISS is the clarity. It's almost 180, and because of the clarity, it's almost impossible to see where they'd hired all the rigs and harnesses needed to recreate the kind of imagery you saw in the film like Gravity. As we follow the astronaut's path all the way through the station, it'd be absolutely impossible for him to be connected to a single harness system where it goes in and out of pods, down corridors, through doorways, flips upside down, through really tight corridors near the Russian hab, and in and out of sleeping quarters whilst being attached to a single harness system. And before any of them mention the vomit rocket, which is the plane that can simulate zero gravity, it can only do that for 30 seconds at a time. Yes, it has been used for filming, specifically during Apollo 13, but if you notice, all of the zero gravity scenes in that movie were less than 20 seconds long. There's a technique in movie making known as the masked jump cut. It's when a director wants to create the illusion of having one long seamless sequence, when in fact, it's several shorter sequences cut together to create the illusion of having one long sequence. No such thing in the International Space Station tour. It's two long sequences with the occasional zoom into an iPad to show us where on the International Space Station we are. A suspicious mind thinks that this might be a good place to hide the cut, but not so. We don't zoom in enough, plus the iPad is reflecting the background in real time. As I said before, there is one single cut in the footage, but it's not exactly hiding anything. The astronaut actually says what's happening. He's standing just above the cupola, and he says there's no point going down there because of the, at the time of filming, it's all dark, that you wouldn't see anything. So he says, we'll come back later, which they do, and it's nice and bright, and you can see what's going on. But you can imagine the joy that someone like Level Earth Observer would have felt when he thought that he'd seen a flaw in the master plan. What the it wouldn't exactly be something they'd be trying to hide if they pointed it out beforehand. One of the highlights of the footage, for anybody not interested in where the guys do their work or eat their dinner, is the cupola sequence. It's where they go down into the viewing section of the International Space Station, which is the part of the base of the station which is pointing towards the Earth. Now for me this is an amazing sequence because not only does it see the curvature of the Earth because that isn't a fisheye lens. We would have seen some kind of distortion by the fisheye lens earlier on in the tour but no it's the same camera going down into the cupola and just looking out of a window and there's the Earth in all its glory. Not only do they look at the Earth they also look at other parts of the space station around them and it's this point where I mentioned the uncanny valley earlier when we talk about the film Gravity. Now as amazing as impressive as all that footage is, when you're looking out of an actual window, an actual part of the International Space Station, it looks completely different. It looks real and not CGI. Put those two side by side and you can really tell the difference. 
what is an actual object in space and what is rendered on a computer. It should also be noted that it's fairly obvious that this scene is not shot underwater. I've shown footage in the past where it's obvious when they're in their training tank with there's bubbles and scuba divers and the whole thing is amazingly blue. This isn't blue, it's black because it's in space. The thing about using chroma key or green screen is there's always an edge. There's always a difference between the subject of the video and the background behind. Now you could say that if you are a suspicious mind that they may have used green screen in some of the static you know, live transmission shots, but no such joy with the International Space Station 50 minute tour. The astronaut is constantly moving into the background and interacting with it. Level Up Observer sometimes mentions augmented reality. Even if you did want to claim that it was a combination of wires, harnesses and green screen, there isn't a computer on the planet that can render an entire space station for this long with that amount of clarity. The thing about being in a zero-g environment is that the human body on its own cannot differentiate between directions. When you're on the Earth, gravity and our inner ear tells us which way is up. In the confines of the International Space Station, it's actually quite easy to get disoriented and kind of forget which way you're pointing. And uh, it's kind of interesting because once you get into one, you really can't tell which one's, uh, which orientation you are. So if I happen to go in a tunnel to look at a picture of something he's got on his screen, I'll come out and I'll be kind of confused because I don't know which way I'm going. And especially if you go to Alex's or Alex to do that, you come out and you're really confused because it feels like it's you're, in, you're in your own, but when you come out, it's a totally different orientation. These are called visual reorientation illusions. It's where an astronaut would come out of a certain area and find that the ceiling, floor and wall have exchanged relative identities. As in, everything looks the same and because their inner ear doesn't know which way is up, neither do they. Because of this, you'll find that a lot of the instrumentation and the labelling within the space station is all orientated the same way. This is basically a an artificial up, if you will, is to keep them grounded and help them psychologically. In fact, when something is upside down relative to the artificial up in the video, it's pointed out as such. Whenever we see a video that's uh, transmitted back home from the International Space Station, whether it's a live broadcast or video such as this, you find that the astronaut is always orientated the right way to the camera. This is because it's healthier for the viewer, psychologically speaking. There's a visual phenomenon known as the Thatcher Effect. It is actually named after our previous Prime Minister. I didn't know that much about her because I was far too young, but what I have heard about her, she was a bit of a cow. It's thought to be connected to specific psychological cognitive modules in our brain that help us to identify minute facial expressions when somebody is the right way up. So when somebody is upside down, it's basically it's hard to see what kind of expression they've got. And it's not just us. This phenomenon has been recognised in chimpanzees as well, which means it's part of our psychological DNA going back 30 million years. It just means we prefer talking to somebody whose face is in the right way up. And don't forget, NASA and other space agencies still need funding, which means they need to be audience friendly. And nobody wants to watch a show where the hosts are figuratively hanging from the ceiling, unless it's for demonstrative or comedic effect. This must have been a bit of a hard watch for Level Up Observer, because usually he's used to cherry picking low resolution images, normally live streamed, where there's ghosting and artifacts and he can say it's evidence that the whole thing is a charade. Or a ridiculous space pantomime. No such joy here. It's 4180 more or less, it's crystal clear, and there's no opportunities for him to say things are getting caught on wires. Um, I'm going to finish up this video with a short plea to Level Earth Observer. I know he watches Dan's channel and he does interact with mine from time to time. Normally to call me Lego Boy because despite me putting together a 10-15 minute video calling him out on his garbage, the only thing he can do is have a go at my Lego collection and call me Lego Boy, which gets me right there. Level Earth Observer does in fact display a level of consistency that most politicians would be envious of. He uploads one or two videos a week and he's been doing it for quite some time and he's always consistently unequivocally 100% all of the time wrong in everything he says and asserts it really is quite remarkable and enviable in some places so I would say this to level of observer or any other flat earther who may be watching this video um, seek help I have got another video where I ask are flat earthers really just stupid uh, I'll go into a little deep of it, but there's a condition known as um, schizotypy. 
and I'll go into that in a bit more detail on one of my other videos. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you very much uh, for watching, if you've made it this far. Thank you very much to Dan for allowing me to be on this channel. I really, really appreciate it. And I really hope that he gets to the half a million points soon, because you really deserve it. And if it happens after this, I can say that I'm partly responsible. Also. Uh, so, as I say, I've been Pete MK. Thank you very much for watching, and say goodbye, Max. Bye. That's Max. Thank you very much, and goodbye. So there we go, and here comes my challenge. Level Earth Observer, or any flat earther for that matter, I challenge you to sit through this entire video, watch it, and then debunk it. Now, you see, I know why no flat earther has tried to yet. It's obvious, it's undebunkable. But we'll see what happens. So there we go. Now, I don't ask this often of you guys, but if you could please share this video as far and wide as you possibly can, that would be great. If you know a flat earther or have one in the family or a friend of the friend who's a flat earther, send it to them and see what they say. Show them that the 50 minute tour of the ISS cannot be debunked. Right, well there we go, what an episode. For now, we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. I'm truly excited to see what the Flat Earthers uh, come up with here. Either they will come up with something and it will be ridiculous or we'll just hear crickets. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, please do hit the like button and as I said, share, share, share. Uh, and if you really enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel too. Just enough time to once again thank YouGov for sponsoring today. Remember, click that link in the description to start taking surveys and earn extra cash now. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend. And you'll all be excited to hear that I will see you on Tuesday for the return of Facebook Science with a guest. See you then.